Learning Unity as a beginner is like stepping into a new universe. There are countless things happening all at once that you do not understand. As a smart person once said, the best way to learn something is learning it 50 tips at a time. So let's go. Have you ever found it hard to get closer to an object in the scene tab? Simply hold down the right mouse button and use these keys to move around just like in any FPS game. Hold down the alt key and use the arrow keys to move lines of code up and down. If you're like me, you love working the default layout, but it's not always the best option, like when you want to work on animations. One fix to this is setting up different layouts for different purposes. Not every time you need a delay, you have to use a coroutine. You can easily use invoke to call a method after some time. And with the invoke repeating, you can call a function over and over with an interval. To avoid typos when passing in methods as strings, you can use the name of. There are times where you don't find the name of a variable suiting anymore, so you go ahead and change it. But then you also have to update its name throughout all your code. Select the name and press Ctrl R R, put in the new name and apply. Join some Discord communities. We've just launched our own and I'm there, I'm active, and I will answer your questions and help you with your problems to the best of my abilities. Join the golden community. Now we're gonna race through some shortcuts, so buckle up. Control Shift N to make an empty game object in the hierarchy, F to focus and Shift F to focus and follow. Selecting the camera and pressing Ctrl Shift F to align it with the scene view. C to go from keyframe to curve mode and vice versa. The low question mark to open the documentation page of that component. Ctrl K C to comment a block of code and Ctrl K U to uncomment it. Type in the name of a statement or a loop, then pressing tab twice for it to autocomplete. Control P to play, Control Shift P to pause, Control Alt P to go forward frame by frame. And to put the cherry on top, you can head over to Edit, Shortcuts, and Customize Everything. Use the Serialize field to see your private variables in the inspector and hide an inspector to not see your public ones. If you're a normal human being, your room is a mess. Like a mess. And so is your hierarchy. While your room is hex to look like Azula's hair, your hierarchy isn't. You can use empty game objects to tidy things up. For the inspector, the header attribute achieves a similar outcome. And if you need more space, you can use the space attribute. Though the number here doesn't make any sense, so just experiment with it. If you want to implement something you've already done in another scene, you can open both scenes in the hierarchy and simply copy and paste. While comments are cool and all, tooltips are the chats because you can see them in the inspector when you hover over the variables. The range attribute makes a slider for the variable below with a minimum and maximum value. And if you don't want the slider, you can use the min attribute, but there is no max. In the layers, the eye icon is for hiding the layer and the hand is for locking it and making it unselectable. And the eyes and hands in the hierarchy have the same functionality. For both tags and layers, you can use slashes to create submenus. Hashtag region and then hashtag end region creates a dropdown that you can use to organize your code even more. And you can describe that region here. To undo all the changes you've made to a scene, click the three dots here and hit discard changes. For tip number 35, I want you to give that beautiful brain of yours few seconds and feel some joy, some adrenaline, some rush by smashing that subscribe button like it's a null reference exception. Set up a tags class to prevent typos when checking tags. And if you're using the double equal operator to check tags, just, just stop. Use the compare tag instead. You can search by type using this button. Also, you can hold down control to select multiple types. And you can use the undo history instead of spamming control Z. You can use debug.log warning and debug.log error to blast your logs with some style. Head over to Edit, Preferences, General to change what happens when a script changes while in play mode. Use this button to save and load presets for your components. Put context menu above a function to create a button for it in the inspector. Go under Edit, Project Settings, Editor to change Unity's numbering scheme. Use application.target frame rate to limit the FPS of your game. You can change the fixed time step under Edit, Project Settings, Time. This is the time interval used for fixed update and physics calculations. 
If you're still using if statements to set values. It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. Instead, use the ternary operator. Now, most of you know that time is money, but you avoid paying 20 bucks to buy a full on pack of assets that's gonna save you three weeks of work. Let me tell you something. Most of us are terrible at making art assets specifically. We should just buy them and save ourselves the time and headache. And even more important than that, you have to be using a to-do list. A to-do list helps you organize your tasks and stay on track. And for tip number 50, do not watch a guy on YouTube explain three different ways of setting up a camera follow system. Just use Cinemachine. And do not forget to subscribe. Yes, you, Jeremy. I'm on to you.